women behind India's militant Hindu nationalist movement. The rise of Hindutva, or Hindu nationalism, ideology in India has led to an increase in female militant Hindu nationalists who are not only advocating for their beliefs fiercely, but also gaining positions in government. Perhaps the most infamous example is Pragya Singh Thakur, accused in a 2008 bombing, who has become a controversial figure, yet managed to secure a seat in India's parliament in 2019, raising concerns about the implication of her election. One of Thakur's followers, Chai, uh, Chaitra Kundapura challenges Western notions of gender equality and feminism, but has also faced legal cases for inciting hatred against India's Muslim minority. Similarly, activist Puja Shankun Pandi, who quit her teaching job to focus on Hindutva activism, has been involved in controversial counseling of Hindu cases and alleged cases of love jihad, which included using violence on young women. These examples demonstrate a worrying trend in India's political landscape, as female Hindu nationalists have become increasingly militant and outspoken to stand out amidst their male colleagues. This raises questions about the role of gender in Indian right-wing politics. The ambitions of these female Hindu nationalists who pursue power and influence outside the domestic sphere seem to contradict their own conservative rhetoric that advocates for traditional gender roles and a more limited scope for women in society. So mm. I wanted to talk about this because I read a very interesting article in um online in newsline magazine new lines magazine excuse me and it basically profiles three different female hindutva activists and through the profiles of these women it examines how they came into the hindutva movement and then also the contradictions of their political involvement and it's so interesting to me and it really made me think about how women in conservative movements are almost always hypocrites because they in the, their pursuit of power and high profile they have to break the gender prescriptions that they themselves are supporting and promoting. For example, one of the women that was profiled in this article is a woman who became so devoted to Hindutva that she divorced her husband and now lives in a, a celibate lifestyle and lives still lives in the same home as her now ex-husband with their children but she lives like outside the home like in a like little shack or whatever because she lives you know in an, an aesthetic life um and how many other women in the hindutva movement are actually getting involved against the wishes of their family that their life as a woman is supposed to be in dedication to because their family's like Oh, you know, this you're getting very outspoken. You this is causing a lot of attention on this. There might be legal in cases, you know, reasonable concerns, right? But they so their involvement you, breaks hmm. down the very barriers in which they are promoting, which is that a Hindu nation depends on this chastity and purity of its women because the women becomes the nation's mothers. Um, how do they explain this double standard? Have they ever? In yeah. in this article, it didn't really seem like they had an answer to that. Like one woman, the woman who divorced her husband to become devoted to Hindutva, she said, oh, well, I already gave two children mm. in dedication to the Indian nation. So I already, I already did my part. <laughs> I already reproduced. <laughs> I did my part. And a Hindu oh woman's God. duty is to reproduce for the strength of the further future nation because otherwise 
they believe that Muslims are going to replace them. Well, if I want to put my conservative hat on, I would say two is be below replacement, isn't it? You got two people and two. You get two and two for two. That's not you know you're you're not gonna get anywhere with just two, lady. Get back, get back in the bedroom. Stop your activism. Get back in the bedroom. I think she's too old now. <laughs> Pop um, out those babies. It's never too late. You you know you failed. You have failed Hindustan. You have you failed, failed Hindustan. Hindustan. <laughs> Hindustan will become Islamic. Only two because of your failure. India's future is Islam. Be ashamed. Oh my God. You yeah, think you love think your country? You need 2.1. <laughs> Yeah, if you loved your country, you would have had at least three. You are below the replacement rate. You have failed your country. Oh my god. This is what you this is what you do for your country. The country is being taken over. YouTube, we don't believe this. By Islamists. And, and you can't even do and make enough babies to make sure that you are uh, outnumbering them in demographics. Shame, shame. This a is true so funny. Hindu, a true Hindu woman would have done a lot more than this. How dare yeah. she divorce her husband? She might as well be a feminist cat lady. And here's the yeah. thing. It was so feminist. interesting. There Just was one woman who's profiled who's like small, like she's a local level Hindutva activist. And um, she has like kind of local power because she went viral once, right? And when, according to this magazine, when they went to go interview other people in her community, even other right wingers in hindu for people would say yeah she has she does so many hate speeches because she needs to stand out amongst the men like the men strong arm the entire space so much that the only way to compete and get any sort of a voice and light amidst that is to be way more radical than the men and that's wow. why one of the women that was profiled in this article is when there were those obscene hate speeches that happened in Hardyvar in New Delhi in what was it 2021 do you remember that with the full blown like salutes and all that yeah. the, the the oaths yeah, yeah, yeah. the people were taking to make yeah. India a Hindu nation no. so one of the people to, to who was profiled, genocide. yes was one of the women who was giving hate speeches at the event that we talked about mm. and to see this issue dissected in this way it was it made so much sense to me and it was so interesting to me but also this is a sidetrack i need to read you what they said about love jihad and muslim men because this is one of the craziest funniest things i've ever heard so this is one of the women talking about love jihad this is <laughs> Okay, so I need to prepare myself because I was howling. Okay. <laughs> they, the Muslim men, drive our girls mad sexually. They make them sex addicts. She, the Hindu girl, cannot think of anything apart from sex. I counsel several of these girls. They have to be saved through counseling or through force, but they will be saved says Pandy, who admits that she has beaten up a young girl to counsel her. I'm going to repeat this. They, the Muslim men, drive our girls mad sexually. They make them sex addicts. She, the Hindu girl, cannot think of anything apart from sex. Where are these Muslim chads in India? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> these Muslim chads. That sounds like a are laying it down. They're making these girls scream. Toes are curling across the Indian subcontinent. Okay. Is this? We should be saying a... thank you. <laughs> what? <laughs> Seriously, oh this is God. like the mo the biggest compliment I've ever heard to Muslim men in India. Like how good? Hey, like come teach the rest of us. What are you guys? What are you and guys doing also, in India? What a slam! This is such a slam on Hindu men. You're openly yeah. talking about how severely inadequately Hindu men are at sexually pleasing their own women, oh and you're. But it's a bad thing, and you're mad at the other people because it's their fault. What? <laughs> 
I mean, you know what? You're right. This is anybody compared to Hindu men, anybody would come off as a Chad. That's why the Muslim, that's why women, I mean, don't Muslim. say that. I mean, that sounds racist. No, no. Yeah. 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 No, I I mean, compared to the bobs and vagines of the people of the, of the, but that's in every culture. I don't like you yes, saying sir. that. I don't like the way you said that. Okay. Okay. I'm just kidding. I'm just joking. Joking. I'm just joking. Okay. No, but this is what, this is what, it, how it comes across. This is what I'm not, I'm not saying that what I'm saying. This is how it comes across. They're just like self owning. Is this but, a masculating? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Men to the most extreme degree. Yeah, D is saying that sounds pro-Muslim. They're like, yeah, these men. Yeah. You, they don't like. You don't even know what they'll do to you. They look. They'll flip your world upside down. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. No, but this is pretty anti-Hindu. If I was anti, if I was Hindu, I would be offended. They were like. What are you talking about? We are, we're capable. Of... We are capable of turning girls into sex addicts. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> tell guys, Indian Indian people in the live chat. Tell them. Tell them. Oh yeah. my god. Yeah. Oh my god. I'm just thinking in right. my head I have this like little vision of like this Hindu girl who falls in love with this Muslim guy and they just have an amazing time together and she's just sitting in her room like daydreaming like oh my god. Wow, that blew my mind. <laughs> um You want to oh read god. any comments in the highlight in the Oops. Um, no, nah, it's, it's good. Oh my gosh. But I, I, I think this contention between conservative women and what they promote and then ultimately the positions of power and what's the word I'm looking for profile and prestige that they seek to attain is very contradictory. And it's like that in different conservative movements too. Like people trashing Marjorie Taylor Greene because she's a divorcee. You're like, oh, you want to promote like all this America first trad wife stuff? Like, where's your husband? Why aren't you at home? Yeah. Wait, let me see. Oh, we got it. Oh, yeah. We There's two things that I need to highlight. One, uh, Kenny just gave out memberships to people and uh, five memberships and you know, to people in the live chat. Thank you so much, Kenny. And also, we got some John Doe just um, gave us a super chat, a $1 super chat. And YouTube is telling me that this is the first super chat that we ever got from John Doe. Well, thank you, John Doe, for using. But this is really great. So YouTube just tells us uh, if somebody has used the super chat for an um, really? ability. And, yeah, oh, yeah. that's cool. If the first, if it's the first time, it will show us. Yeah. Oh, we just got another super chat by Kenny. Ten dollar, ten euro super chat by Kenny. Thank you. Oh, beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for all the support. All right. Um, oh wait. Oxymoron is saying, and Hindutva is solely to be to be blamed for this. Because he's I mean, saying jokes, it, jokes inside the parallel to explain this would be what American society does to Korean men. I'm not exactly sure what you mean about this. And Hindufa is slowly mm. to blame for this. American society does to Korean men. You mean like how teenage girls worship K-pop stars? Or do you mean how generally in America, Asian men are seen as more effeminate? Because those are completely different things. Are you saying we don't blame Muslim men? I think we do a, I think we do a generally a good job and not I mean sometimes we joke around uh, but we may um, we're very clear about when we're joking and when we're being serious. I think we do a good job in trying to make sure that we we're not just blaming um, we don't come up with general statements mm -hmm. and even if, sometimes when we do it's clear that we don't we're not being serious. I mean at least I think. Of. 
I'm not being serious. It's pretty obvious that I'm not being serious. So I don't know what you guys are. Oh, well, let me turn this off. It's my alarm for my next show. I don't know what you guys are complaining about. Uh, we got an, a new member, Wishwa, just became a member. Thank you so much for Wishwa. Um, and then, yeah, Darko is saying he's just doing another what about us. Yes, exactly. You can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese God, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.